To false friend, a afar way tis, though his roof be reared by the road. To staunch friend, a a straight way leads, though far he have fared from thee. Everybody, hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse, and if this is your first time here on the channel, I am the host, and I host weekly videos uh, about Norse heathenry, uh, Germanic heathenry, whatever you want to call it, maybe Ossetru, different names known by many, many different names. Uh, it's all pretty much the same thing, maybe just variations of the same thing, but. Uh, Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't yet already, please head down here and click the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you click the bell notification so that way you're notified every time I upload new content. And while you're down in that general vicinity, click in the description area. There's a link tree link at the very top of the description. It'll send you to a page that shows all of the various ways that you can support Midgard Musings through PayPal, uh, becoming a Patreon a supporter on Patreon, my Teespring and Redbubble stores for merchandise all other kinds of stuff down there so please check that out at your leisure and see if anything fits for you uh, today's video I wanted to do uh, because we are in the time of year when uh, we've just kind of come through what a lot of heathens uh, observe as the Yule season uh, this is in fact coming up the Yule festivity weekend for myself and my close-knit uh, folk uh, so we are celebrating Yule this weekend, uh, which is the first uh, uh, full moon of 2020, actually. This is the uh, Yule month, the Yule moon, and we are celebrating our Yule men. Uh, so today's video is going to be on hospitality, and uh, heathen hospitality specifically, how hospitality and why it's so important, uh, how and why it's so important uh, within a heathen worldview. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to be citing is going to be uh, the things that our arch heathen ancestors uh, believed in and, and po possibly uh, practiced with, when it comes to hospitality. Uh, we're going to be talking about some stanzas from the Holomol like you heard in the intro uh, to this video. And then we're going to see how hospitality uh, for heathens fits today in modern times. Uh, so in arch heathen times, in, in the ancient times where our ancestors, where we're drawing from, hopefully where I personally uh, draw a lot of my inspirations from is from you know, the past, uh, not living in the past, but I'm definitely drawing inspiration uh, to build uh, into the future. Uh, hospitality, you know, uh, was a very, very important thing in society and in the culture of uh, Germanic pagan and uh, Germanic pagans, Germanic tribes uh, at the time. And why was it so important? Um, because you have to think about the culture uh, at the time, the way the world was at the time. It was a very different world, uh, you know, a thousand or more years ago than it is today um, and you had you didn't have a hotel <clears throat> or multiple hotels in every other town um, you may not even even had friends or family in a neighboring city or country or town or province or or whatever uh, so when you were traveling and when people who traveled went different places um, hospitality was looked for and needed for survival um, if you came upon a stranger's house who you've never met um, their hospitality could save your lives, especially if you were traveling in harsh conditions. Um, you were also subject to bandits, um, not just the things of the wild, but, but people uh, who could, uh, you know, take advantage of you and uh, do things to do you harm. So um, in the, those unsafe times, seeking shelter, uh, seeking uh, food, and, and all that type of stuff, maybe fresh clothes, uh, anything of that nature that kind of envelops the term hospitality. Um, was, was looked for and valued very greatly. So, um, hospitality is kind of a two-way street. Um, it's, it's a, you know, to, to be hospitable as a host uh, is very important uh, through a lot of the texts that we read, especially within the first 79 or 80 stanzas of the Hovamal. Uh, that section of the Hovamal is uh, called the Gestathotr. Um, it's, it's kind of a guideline um, of suggestions or words of wisdom um, that uh, applied to not only guests but also hosts. 
Uh, so hospitality is very important um, if you're hosting an event, if you're hosting guests, you know, you're being a hospitable host. Uh, there's certain, you know, the decorum, the, the, the etiquette, the, the, the things of that nature, things that you would be uh, looked to do and provide for um, were somewhat expected and uh, looked highly upon when, it, when provided. And then definitely your uh, etiquette and decorum uh, as a guest uh, of the host. Anytime you were the guest of someone's abode or, or another one's hall or, or homestead, um, there were things required and expected of you as the guest. Um, now, the sheltering of strangers, um, you know, travelers, things like that, it's not so very common nowadays because obviously we have the luxury of motels, hotels, maybe friends and family in various places that we go. So we're never going to just be, you know, walking into a, a town or driving into a town or flying into a city. Um, have nowhere to go and then just knock on the first door we see and look for shelter and look for food and anything like that and expect these strangers to, to house us or anything like that. So the, the dynamic is possibly a little bit different, but as we're going to get to talking to later on in this video, hospitality does have its place in heathenry today. Now, the application of hospitality and the use of hospitality in heathen times um, was a very important thing because uh, it, built, it built relationships um, and it built on luck. It built on the luck of the tribe, the luck of the, the, the homestead or the clan or the family that was displaying hospitality. Um, and, it sh and it kind of transferred that luck over to the guests possibly. You know, they, they were able to tie weird with these people and exchange and conversation and, and be a part of their lives for a little bit. So weird was tied in those moments and they were able to um, potentially continue on with trade and other businesses and things of that nature that were vital to the survival of society uh, as it were back then in those days. So it was very important at the, you know, in our heathen times as we call it to uh, you know, have, have hospitality and, and be hospitable. Now it doesn't mean that you would just blindly and, and, and willingly open your halls and, and stuff to just everybody and anybody, but it was more common practice to, to, uh, to, to allow a traveler or a stranger to take up a boat with you for X amount of time. We see it also you know, in the lore. Uh, there, there's one story of, of Thor and Loki traveling to, uh, uh, to the giant Utgard Loki, uh, and, um, you know, they, they, they come upon, you know, the farmer and, and, and his family, and they stay there. So they were travelers, they were guests, there was hospitality shown there. So we see it even in our lore, uh, the importance that's placed on hospitality. Now, I believe that hospitality is um, truly and, and purely displayed at the grassroots level. Um, it's not anything that you can really feel in its entirety um, without that interpersonal relationship, those, those, that, that, those people skills. Um, things like um, you know, being kind to somebody uh, in like an online setting, we're in, we're in modern times, you know, so we have a lot of you know, social media platforms, um, you know, letting people on your timeline or, or friending people or following people on your social media platforms or um, even the subscriptions here on, on the YouTube platform, that sort of thing. Um, while those are nice gestures and, and, and acts of kindness and support, uh, I don't really feel that that goes into the level of what it means to be hospitable and, and display hospitality. You can't really get that. Same way that you can't get frith through an online uh, platform, through an online uh, exchange only. Frith is something that needs to be um, built and, and, and worked on through interpersonal uh, you know, uh, react, uh, relationships. Um, things like that. So, hospitality in an online thing, I think that's, I don't really feel that that applies. You may disagree, you may have your own insight on it, so let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Now, obviously, you know, within the social media dynamic, there's certain rules and certain, you know, guidelines, rules you have to play by, whatever. Um, so, there's an expectation that's set of, of how you're supposed to behave, and those that don't behave that way are kind of booted or kicked out. Again, I don't, I don't, that may seem like a very surface level description of hospitality, but there, there's no real action of hospitality being shown. You're not taking somebody in, you're not giving them shelter, you're not ho housing them, feeding them, clothing them, anything like that. Um, it's really more just a courtesy and, and a friendly type exchange. So that's my take on it in, you know, modern times. So. One of the things that we have to uh, also keep in mind is um, within the first, like I said, 79 or 80 stanzas really just kind of depends on what translation of the Hohomo you're reading. Today I'm going to be citing from the Hollander 
Liam Hollander's translation of the Havamal. So I think it's within the first 80 standards, again, the Gesta Thotr portion. You're hearing about the uh, words of wisdom from Odin to, uh, to guests and hosts alike. The very first stanza warns against something that I mentioned a little bit earlier, that we don't just, you know, walk in anywhere and, oh, just because you've opened up your halls to me, um, I'm, I'm now your guest and I'm, it's a free reign, and um, that doesn't, also doesn't mean that you, uh, you know, don't have your wits about you. The very first stanza of the Havamal says, Have they eyes, have thy eyes about thee when thou enterest. Be wary alway, be watchful alway, for one never knoweth when need will be to meet hidden foe in the hall. So be wary, be, be cautious, you know, um, be a, a good guest, uh, be a hospitable guest, um, but keep your wits about you, be mindful, um, especially if it's maybe a new place, places you haven't been before, maybe even if it's been places you've gone, you know, this isn't your hall, it's, it's not your hall, not your call, so things may be going on you have to be wary about um, and, and use your discretion for. So. Um, you can yourselves uh, search, um, the, uh, you know, just Google Hall them all. Um, you're going to see a bunch of things come up, and um, you're going to see a bunch of different translations. But if you have your own version of the Hall Wall, definitely check out the first 80 stanzas for that. But I'm going to read to you from about um, three or four stanzas. Starting with stanza 42. With his friend, a man should be friends ever and pay back gift for gift. Laughter before laughter he learned to give, and ate leasing for lies. With his friend a man should be friends ever, and with him the friend of his friend. But foeman's friend be friend thou never, and keep thee aloof from his kin. If friend thou hast whom faithful thou deemest, and wishes to win him for thee, ope thy heart to him, nor withhold thy gifts, and fair to find him often. If another there be whom ill thou trusteth, yet wouldst get from him gain, speak fair to him, though false thou meanest, and pay him leasing for lies. That was uh, stanza 42 through 45 in the Hollander translation of the Hovamal, and I like those particular ones because it, very, it focuses very much on hospitality between friends. Um, which again can only really and truly be developed through um, I feel you know heart-to-heart face-to-face encounters now is it possible that we can develop strong ties and strong bonds with people over long distances without having that personal uh, connection and that personal relationship yes for sure I do believe so and I have several of those um, here on, on on an online setting some of you who are subscribers and supporters of the channel others who I talk to on a regular basis um, only through long distance. We've never actually personally met in person. Um, I consider some of these people friends of mine because we've exchanged enough dialogue. We've, we've, we've shared our minds with one another, you know, um, which, which stands at which I just, uh, you know, ope thy hearts to one another. We, we share our minds with one another. So we, we give to one another in ways that go beyond just the physical connection of a face-to-face -face thing. You can be face-to-face -face with somebody and have no connection at all, and then you can have a great connection with somebody without ever having been with them in a physical environment. Um, it just really depends on the type of individuals you are, and I think that that goes you know, deeper into other things, other, other metaphysical things, but that may be another discussion for another time. But uh, I like those stanzas, and I think that it's an important part to remember. You have friends, if you have people who you have, you know, tied weird with and shared your hearts with and shared your minds with and exchanged gifts to one another. Don't let those, don't let the weeds grow up tall between those roads. There's another saying and I'm probably butchering it and where it came from I can't remember right off the top of my head, but uh, something about um, uh, let never the road, uh, no, what is it? Ah, I had a brain fart there for a minute. Uh, be never the first with friend of thine to break the bonds of fellowship. Something along those lines, right? Um, it's kind of a poetic thing, but it really is. It's like, you know, you've got a friend. Don't, don't wait for those. Don't let those ties just break easily. Um, constantly build that friendship. Constantly nurture those ties. Nurture those, the, the web that, that has been woven. Uh, and make sure that those ties stay strong. Um, don't let the road, you know, uh, between you 
grow so far apart that the weeds grow up because of it being untraveled. Um, even if it's a far distance, you know, travel it often. Um, that sort of thing. One of the first stanzas that I read from earlier kind of goes into that. So I like that stanza. I think it really touches on the true meaning of hospitality um, beyond just, uh, you know, sheltering of strangers or sheltering of travelers, things that we don't really have control over um, on a day-to-day on -day basis. But the things that we can control, the things that we can have parts in as modern heathens, you know, make sure that you're nurturing those friendships. Make sure that you are being hospitable and courteous and, 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 and whatnot to your close friends, your family, your kid, your kith, your tribes, your folk. Um, this, is, this is how I think that we as modern heathens can really build on the tradition of hospitality that our ancestors uh, lived and, and did every day or, or, or throughout their lives and ways that we can honor them. Um, as modern heathens continuing on the old ways in modern times. So anyways folks, that's today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button to show your support. If you don't want to miss anything, click the bell for notifications. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this journey of learning more about Norse heathenry. Hail, and I'll see you in the next video.